welcome to this week's Lush Kitchen menu. So up first on Monday is a non-vegan product called After Tango Foot Mask. So as I just said, it's non-vegan, therefore I've never tried it unfortunately, but it is very similar to Volcano Foot Mask in the way that it works. So it's called After Tango because the idea is that after you've gone and tangoed, as everyone does, this is great to relieve those feet and get them back to the condition they were before the strenuous exercise. The idea is that you smother your feet in this mask and then you cover your feet in either cling film or carrier bags and you can do what I do and then walk around the house for 20 minutes like Bigfoot trying to scare your cats which is really non-vegan of me but it's quite funny and entertaining so you know forgive me and then you rinse them off underneath the running water and it leaves your skin lovely and beautiful and moisturized and clean and smelling great this is different from volcano because it has things like honey in there calamine oil to really soothe and cool down that skin this one also has coriander seeds and coriander seeds are a really nice kick to add that slight fragrance to remove any aromas and it's just a nice deodorizer I suppose I should say is that a word deodorizer i think it is unfortunately it also contains lots of avocado which makes me sad because you know how i feel about avocado so this mask also has cocoa butter witch hazel lemon oil and obviously the key ingredients which is kale and clay and pumice which is what gives it that sort of coarse feel to it and what helps to scrub off those horrible things on your feet a lot of people prefer this one to volcano because of the smell difference whereas i love volcano because it's really strong after the tango has more of a lemongrassy feel with a slight sort of citrusy lime burst although it looks quite disgusting and i've seen pictures it's very like mushy and brown but the smell is a lot different and a lot more enjoyable for those who don't like strong smells okay so the second product coming up on monday i knew they'd bring it out because of the hoo-ha and the excitement that came when i mentioned that i'd made some in the kitchen and that is more than mortal body scrub As you can imagine, my review of this is going to be positive because I was given a choice of products to make in the Lush kitchen and I chose this product so if I didn't like it I wouldn't have chosen it now the reason I chose it was because it's a product that hasn't come out very often I believe uh, on Monday it is the second time or possibly the third time it's come out since the kitchen first opened I just thought you know what this poor little thing is being stuck in the corner no one's talking about it no one's interested in it and actually it is such a great product this is what it looks like what makes this product so special is just how well it exfoliates. It's not a scratchy exfoliator. It has a mixture of crushed walnut shells and almonds. You can really scrub it hard if you want to, but it's not grainy and it's not really coarse, like say rough with the smooth. This is gorgeous. Because it has grapefruit oil in there and it has lots and lots of fresh pineapple, it has a sort of what I would describe as a fruity smell and it really reminds me of orange and pineapple diluted squash this is such a beautiful scrub i do love this so much this is the perfect scrub for summer this will be great after coming off the beach and perhaps wanting to have a gentle exfoliation while not damaging the skin but just to get rid of perhaps some of that dried skin so what i dislike about this product is first of all it only comes in these small little pots here which i dislike because i tend to use it for a whole body scrub including my face it's gentle enough for the face i only get three full body scrubs with this so it doesn't last that long i mean these ones say that you can use them up until um, May 2017 but I think you have to be very careful of how you store these if you want their shelf life to be that long. I find and from experience having had 15 pots of this stuff that this does not <laughs> This does not want to be in the video. What I have found from experience is that this does not fare well in the bathroom. If you put a pot of this in the bathroom, if you come back to it two days later, there is a good chance that you will find mold growing on this. And if you leave it for a week, guaranteed that it'll be mold. Seriously, this one does not, does, oh, does not want to do what it's told today. Oh my God goodness me let's change its name to more than annoying because right now i've just painted my leg in body scrub this product needs needs to be kept in the fridge and the third and final product coming up on monday is something and i believe i'm pronouncing it right enziminite facial cleanser 
Now, as I said in my review, I was really expecting to love this cleanser because the ingredients list just suggested it would be so fruity and delicious. You've got fresh papaya, fresh pineapple, fresh lime, and sweet orange oil. So I just thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to fall in love with a cleanser I could only use for a few months before it runs out and I have to wait till the kitchen bring it out again. When it arrived, I was equally shocked and disappointed by what I found because actually I feel that the ingredients list makes it out to be greater than it is. In fact, if I'm going to be honest, I really don't like the smell of this cleanser at all and I don't think many people I know would disagree with my sentiments. The main ingredient after kaolin in the ingredients list is wheat germ oil and that really takes over and creates an aroma that is not particularly pleasant. Let's just put it that way. It's not the most disgusting thing in the world. I'd much rather smear that on my face than Aquamarina, but it's up there with my least favorite aromas from Lush. So this product to me smells very similar to Volcano Foot Mask, but it has a slight stronger pineapple element to it and it's not as in your face. In terms of consistency, it's very similar to Otafix face mask, but slightly thinner. So it's almost like a stodgy porridgey sort of consistency. Consistency. It's a very softening cleanser and very easy to apply. So that's a positive. And in its favor, it did leave my skin with a very slight glow to it. And I think the inclusion of the pineapple and the papaya and the lime and the orange, all four citrusy fruits, probably really cleaned out my pores and gave me that natural glow. So onto Tuesday's menu. And Tuesday's menu has two products. Two products. This is, this is what you get when I film videos at midnight. You get the excitable me. I am a night owl and whether or not I'm tired and deliriously tired as I am now, I get excitable and I'm just annoying, which is why I like to lock myself away at night. So the first product coming out on Tuesday is one that I have one here of and that is Temple of Truth Bubble Bar. This is another surprising product actually because when I first read about this it was described as having an incense-y sort of smell and I didn't get that at all when it arrived. It's normally a lot brighter, a lot more vivid than this. When people said it was going to be really, really incense-y and smoky, I did have an idea in my head of what I thought it smelled like. And then it arrived and it smelled like nothing I was expecting at all. This smells very similar to Christmas Eve bubble bar. It is more to me of a musky floral smell with an underlying woody aroma from the sandalwood to give it that nice, calming, sweet woodiness. It's definitely not incense unless I have not experienced that sort of incense, but it's a very simplistic floral smell. I think if you like Dorothy Bubble Bar, if you like Christmas Eve Bubble Bar, you'll really like this smell. I rate this really highly in the water, although this looks a little bit worse for wears because it's quite faded now. Fresh ones are incredibly gorgeous in the water. They're a vivid blue colour and they do turn your water so blue and gorgeous. Also coming up on Tuesday is Ring of Roses Buttercream. So what is good about this product? Well, for those who love Amando Pondo, you'd be very pleased to hear that this buttercream shares its scent with that family. So it is a light rose smell with a really strong entwining of lemon oil. It is easily one of my favorite rose dominated smells from Lush. Now, my only issue with this product is back when the Lush Kitchen first released it, a lot of people were expecting the buttercream as in like almond and lemon slip and heavenly bodies. They were expecting that sort of pot full of lovely goo moisture they could lift out and smother all over themselves and I was one of those people so I was really disappointed when it arrived and it was a block. Lush have done both varieties both the solid and the slightly liquid version and I think the liquid version doesn't necessarily always keep its consistency which is why Lush has sort of reverted back to making it into more of a soap so it's a little bit misleading. Unless things change your piece will be a big slab of soap but what is weird is that the soap isn't particularly soft as I was expecting something that was softer than a, a normal soap but it's not. If you like Amanda Pondo and you want something with that scent grab it it's lovely. I'm sure if you like soaps you'll probably really enjoy it because the smell is there and it does last in the shower it does stick to your skin afterwards. It's just the fact that it's not a buttercream and they just need to change its name to make it a soap. On to Wednesday. I Is it me or have I lost my enthusiasm this week? I think it's because the kitchen this week is not something that really grabs me. So the first product coming out out on Wednesday is the Soft Touch Hand Serum. 
Well, Lush Kitchen have named it as Soft Touch Hand Serum, but I believe that is the body butter. I just wish they'd make that vegan because it sounds amazing and it is very, very popular. So it's got its usual cocoa butter, it's got the shea butter, and then it's got a list of ingredients that just makes you salivate. Fresh lemons, vanilla pod infusions, avocado oil, neroli oil, and then lots of non-vegan products like beeswax and lanolin, etc. So the reason why I think it is the body Body butter and not a brand new product is A because as I said in my review the Lush Kitchen are not in any position to create brand new products and B if you look at all of the descriptions the original point of that was for your hands I think it is just the body butter but given a new name I can tell you right now although I've never used it buy it if you're considering it because it has been out in the kitchen so many times and every time it comes out it sells out quickly smell wise I believe it's sort of like a vanilla -y smell I've heard it's a really lovely smell it works Works really well can be used as a whole body butter the second product coming out on Wednesday is a shower gel called narcotic shower gel this is a shower gel I was excited about back when they re-released it a couple of years ago for the first time but this is one of the ones that I would put in my room 101 if I had to it was thoroughly disappointing smell wise it's got lemon oil in it it's got tea tree oil in it so those two combined give you the overall sort of medicinal smell and the idea behind it hence its name is to cleanse and to remove dirt from pores and to heal broken skin you can use it a shampoo because it's supposed to help your scalp it's just supposed to be a shower gel that keeps you clean unfortunately I found it so drying on my skin that's never happened to me with a shower gel before it's like a really deep blue color and you're almost scared it's going to stain your skin it doesn't it lathers up okay rinse it off the scent's still on your skin it stays on there you get a nice sort of cleansing clean crisp lemony tea tree oil smell but my hands had those sort of weird wrinkly bits on my fingertips Tips. like I'd been in the bath for an hour and a half it was so weird I've never had that before but it was so drying on my skin it sucked out the moisture and just left me with such parched skin on to Thursday and we start Thursday with a product I do have and that is super tramp bubble bath and shower gel so this is a fairly new invention from Lush it pretty much just chills by itself in the Lush Kitchen. Back when the Lush Kitchen first introduced this in one of the first sort of five weeks of it being in the kitchen, it just kept slipping itself back in. You suddenly log in one day and go, oh look, there you go, there's Super Tramp back again for another round. It replaced Tramp, which is a cult classic for many, many Lushes across the globe. It's not one of my favourites, but I'm sort of growing to love it a little bit more because I do appreciate the body lotion and the uh, perfume. But it's supposed to be a revamped better I don't know what that is, version of Tramp. I don't quite think it's had that effect, unfortunately. I don't quite think that Lush fans, who are fans of Tramp, have quite bought into Super Tramp for replacing that. I don't really know why Lush bothered. So this is, well, so this is definitely an acquired taste. As you can see, I mean, come on. I have one kilogram bottles of shower gels above me here. This is a 100 gram bottle and I've had this for a good six months. And you can see that very little has been used. Not a favor of mine. It's definitely a very earthy forestry smell. One of those products that has so many ingredients that I just, I forget. So it's got white whorehound and peppermint leaf infusion. And the difference between Tramp and Super Tramp is partly because of that peppermint. And the patchouli is not as in the forefront as it is in Tramp. And you do get that slight cool freshness of the peppermint. But it's a very, very slight peppermint smell. It's got rose petals, lavender infusion, orange peel, sea salt, patchouli, pettigrain, pimento, sandalwood, ginger. It's an acquired taste. If you like earthy, strong, domineering smells, you'll probably love this. But this isn't one for those who like something quite gentle and sweet and simple like me and the second product coming up on Thursday is something called recon get again
again, another non-vegan product, and I'm slightly bitter because it's a hair treatment. I think hair is becoming my new favourite thing from Lush. This has had very, very mixed reviews. If you are somebody with very, very dry hair, this might be right up your alley because people have said that using this has completely allowed their hair that moisture back that they don't have. And somebody like me, I do have quite dry hair. So anything that adds that moisture to my hair is wonderful. So yet again, the beeswax lets me down, which stops it from being vegan. So there's peppermint oil in this, rose absolute, lavender oil, rosemary oil, etc. And it is the rosemary oil mixed with the peppermint that gives it a smell. So it's a very potent smell. It's a very minty smell, medicinal minty smell. People have said it reminds them of Vicks Vapor Rub a little bit, but it also has that sort of herbal rosemary touch to it. And we're on to Friday. I am the most boring person in this video. I apologise. I'll try and get a personality for next week. So on to Friday and we start with a soap called Beautiful Pea Green Soap. So I'm going to tell you a fact, a really boring fact actually that you probably don't care about, but at the moment and for the past two or three weeks I have been obsessed with peas. Yeah, I, I have made pea and garlic soup numerous times, I have peas with every meal I eat. When I first heard beautiful pea green soap I thought oh my goodness what is better than a soap that smells like peas. I was heartbroken when it arrived and was completely thrown off by the fact that it smells nothing like peas. And last product to come out on Friday is easily one of my least favourite jellies. The joy of jelly shower jelly. In all fairness to Lush, they're doing a positive thing because firstly, they're releasing a menu that I really can't have because there's a lot of non-vegan products and those products that I can have are really low rated products for me. So it's really helping me to save my bank balance. And the positive thing is that it's bringing out lots of products that haven't been out very often for new Lush fans to try. Now, Joy of Jelly shares its scent with the Sex Bomb family, which is one of my least favorite scents from Lush. It's not particularly offensive. It's just a bit boring and I'm not a floral person. Because I don't don't like this family that much. I find the jelly a little bit more pungent than the bath bomb. It's a really lovely purple colour and not one purple colour, it sort of has like a wave thing going on like Big Calm. As to be expected, the key ingredient really is, or the key smell should I say, is jasmine and it has lots of jasmine, absolute jasmine oils, jasmine flower etc. There's a lang a lang thrown in there, there's musk thrown in there, although I don't necessarily get that much of a musk smell, it's a very very subtle element to the jelly. There's clary sage oil in there, tiger lily and red rose petals. There's lots and lots of floral elements to this jelly, but I just find it, it's inoffensive again. I use that word again, it's inoffensive. And if you like floral smells, if you like sex bomb, you'll probably love this. It's quite moisturizing in all fairness. It does its job, does what it's supposed to do, but it's not something that I would buy again. So that is the Lush Kitchen menu for this week. I think I've hidden my personality around somewhere, perhaps in my new arranged Lush collection you might be able to see behind me. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's very flowery this week actually. I promise I'll make mine more exciting next week. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I appreciate all the support so far that you guys have given me. And until my next video, bye!